He has some suspicious timing, that's all I'm saying. I'm paranormal romance author Miranda Thorne, and today I have a few vampire stories from medieval England. A knight and his wife had a baby, but the day after the birth of the baby, they were devastated to find it dead in its crib. Its throat slashed open so the blood stained the cradle. A second child was born, and then a third, but each time the babies were found murdered the next day, even though the whole household was on guard to catch the culprit. The lady announced her fourth pregnancy, and they were terrified. They begged God to spare their child. The night the baby was born, they lit up the whole household. They were determined that nothing would get this baby. Everyone was on guard, and if they found anything suspicious, it would be dealt with swiftly and brutally. That same night, a stranger came to the house. He was tired from his journey and asked to stay, and the knight let him in and told him why they were keeping such a close eye on things. The man was sympathetic and very grateful that the knight had let him in. I mean, would you let in a stranger when your last three children had been murdered? I'm surprised they didn't jump the gun and kill him on sight. Or at least turned him away to be eaten by wolves or robbed by bandits or something. He has some suspicious timing. That's all I'm saying. The stranger offered to stay up with everyone to try and catch the killer, but when midnight came, all the members of the household began to fall into a mysterious sleep. The stranger was shocked and horrified that he was becoming drowsy too. He knew that if he slept, the child would die, but his eyelids were slowly drifting closed when he saw a middle-aged woman bending over the cradle. Without hesitation, the stranger sprang forward and wrestled the woman to the ground. The commotion woke everyone. They were shocked to find that it was the most trusted and loved matron in the city. The woman was quite questioned, but refused to speak. The knight was prepared to let her go, but the stranger accused her of being a vampire. He pulled out a key from a nearby church and pressed it to her face. Her skin blistered and bubbled and began to smoke. When he pulled the key away, the holy item had left a brand. But the knight was confused. How could such a well-known woman be a demon for so many years? But the stranger said she was a monster in disguise and sent the members of the household to find the real woman that the vampire resembled. The astonished matron came face to face with her evil double. The same key brand that marked the vampire also scarred her face too. The stranger said that this lady was clearly virtuous and dear to heaven, and because of all her good deeds, she'd angered the devil and an evil messenger had made itself into her image, so she would be accused of killing the babies and executed. He then said he would prove it by releasing the vampire. It howled and screeched like an animal and threw itself out the window. It flew away and never returned. A couple quickies that I wish had more detail. Walter Mapp was apparently the originator of the two sentence horror stories. A knight buried his deceased wife, but instead of being allowed to rest in peace, she was revived and stolen by a band of fairies. She was supposed to dance hand in hand with a rotting corpse for the rest of eternity, but her husband rescues her and gave her many children and their alliance to live today, or at least it did in the 12th century. See, isn't that a story you want more details on? Romantic, which is right up my alley. William was an English soldier who went to a bishop to ask his advice. A very wicked man had died in his home, and after four nights, he started returning and calling to the other people living there. But after they went to him, they would sicken and die within three days. The bishop told William to dig up the corpse, cut off the head, and sprinkle it with holy water, and then rebury him. William does this, but the killings continue, until one night, William hears the call himself. He leapt out of bed and seized his sword. The demon fled in terror, but he chased it all the way to its grave. He cut its head off off and the people were never bothered by the vampire again. Let me know in the comments which story was your favorite. If you'd like to stay up to date on when my next book or video comes out, sign up for my newsletter. It's the best way to stay in contact with me.